Hey everybody, Adrian and Kim here from the Northwoods family. What we're going to be doing for you here today is talking about two of our large uh, pop-up style ice fishing shelters that we bought this year. We got these for doing ice camping and ice fishing with the whole family. So we were looking at some of the larger pop-up style ice shanties that are available. So we're going to be comparing the Eskimo 850 XD with the Clam C890, two of probably the most popular pop-up ice shanties out there on the market. We've used these for a season now. I yep. uh, got them out in the ice several times, uh, both just fishing out of them as well as camping out of them. Mm -hmm. And well, we've had a chance to kind of run them both in, in both aspects, fishing or sleeping in them. And usually it was head to head, like usually we have them both popped up uh, at the same time. because so we'd sleep in one and then kind of have a kitchen in one and then have the fishing in the other. So we've had a, a chance to evaluate like both shapes too. Yeah. for different activities. All right, so first thing I'm gonna show you here is some specs on the two different models. They're very similar, but they obviously have a different shape, a little bit different weight, and a little bit different square footage. So there's a size comparison of both of the hub shelters all packed up. Kim, how tall are you? I am almost exactly six feet tall. She's I'm almost- 5'11 and uh, whatever. <laughs> yep, 5'11, couldn't quite hit that six foot mark. I always give her uh, grief about that. Hey, could have had a full ride, but it's a six foot. <laughs> Anyways, so you can see the Eskimo, even though it's a little bit heavier, it does pack up a little bit shorter. So the clam, in order to fit in the back of my short bed pickup, I actually have to put it in angled. But the Eskimo does fit in the bed, uh, the short bed of my pickup just fine. So does this make me like the Vanna White of ice fishing now? I think it does. <laughs> you look very good, baby. Yeah, thanks. From the outside, a uh, couple things with the bags. So the Eskimo has a cinch top bag. It's actually pretty easy to get into yeah. uh, when we pack it up. So I do like it. The bag is really heavy duty. Like you can tell it is really, really well made. Um, it has these straps on the outside to kind of cinch it down. Really good, strong handles and the stitching seems to be pretty good too. The uh, clam bag has a big, zipper on the side and it's a little bit more difficult to pack up and you can feel the bag itself is a lot thinner. Uh, both have got handles and as I said they're both fairly heavy so they're not fun to carry. Uh, you definitely want to drag them in a sled or something like that. Was set up on the Eskimo. Obviously, we haven't drilled anything down just because we're on the lawn here. How long did that take us? Three minutes? Yeah, three minutes and three seconds. Okay. From start to getting it up. It obviously takes some time to put in the spikes and drill it down, but. Yeah, yeah and that probably would add a little bit more time with oh, this yeah. because the Eskimo, I believe it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it has nine uh, attachment points because it is kind of a rectangle. Yeah. And then if you really want to get the uh, straps to hold the hubs out too, you have one, two, three, four, five. You have six of those. All the same number as on the uh, clam. Setup is not real tough, but it does help having a second person, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, you need that counter. <laughs> direction they like pop them out so unless you like drill down the other side and you can pull against that like you probably want two people i have set both of these up by myself and uh, i'm a pretty tall guy six four so i can reach and it's it can be a little tricky just because of the size you got to reach so far to pull the hubs out this one has two poles that go on either side of the door too just you know just normal like tent pole kind of set up and little sleeves up at the top so basically it just provides shape for your door so you can zip and unzip okay it's kind of important for like sturgeon spearing that it actually can be dark in here mm. so it is kind of cool that this does get pretty dark but it also gets very light when you start opening up these windows it's really nice this i like this light gray color it really helps reflect the yeah. light yeah. and obviously we're standing on dark grass if you have white snow or white ice it's a little bit brighter in here even then. Height-wise, again, you're 5'11". Yeah. You can stand up in here. I can stand like under these high points, but like when you get, you know, anywhere away from there, it's getting kind of tight. So, yeah, exactly. Um, but one thing we don't like about this one is that it, it doesn't go super high. Um, I know that you've mentioned that it's like a headroom feeling, that it's low, and I feel the same way in here, so. Yeah, but we are both freakishly tall. We are freakishly tall. So, yeah, you, most people are probably going to be all right with I'm it. I'm guessing they'll be fine. I definitely feel when I'm in here that I got to hunch down as I'm I walking around. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's a little bit a little bit smaller um, than mm -hmm. the clam uh, in terms of headroom. So let's talk about some of the interior features on the Eskimo. First, just starting with the fabric. It's insulated. 
it, if you get a heater going in here, it can stay really nice and warm. You've got these kind of stash pockets here that you can uh, slide some gear in. Not quite, I don't understand why they did it this way versus sewing them this way, but you can slide coats and things like that and they're nothing super heavy. The windows, they Velcro up and then they also have a Velcro down here, which is kind of nice. One thing that the Eskimo has that the clam doesn't is that the windows are actually removable. So you can pull this window out if you get a real warm day and you want some ventilation, you know, like an early season or late season on the ice. Or if you're cooking or something in here and you want some ventilation like that. So that's kind of a, a neat feature. The only thing I've noticed about it is, you know, I like to stake these things down pretty tight because uh, when you actually pull pull the sides out, it gives you a little bit more room. One thing I've noticed is if you go real tight around the door, sometimes this window, it'll kind of stretch and it'll want to just, the Velcro will want to come off. So I just wouldn't uh, stake down the door too, too tightly. It's the only thing I'd say about that. It has two ventilation on either end, two vents. And then you've got a couple little stash pockets here for phones or anything else that you might want to throw in there. One thing we really like about the Eskimo that is especially great for the kids is that one of the doors is a full length door. Yep. So it's really easy to walk in and out. You can carry in and out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, carry stuff in and out. You don't have to trip over it. You do have another kind of traditional door over here too, which is nice. So you could access it from both sides, depending on how you drill your holes. You know, you could have some holes over here and then you could have some holes over here and you could exit, you know, out of uh, each, each door. We were able to fit all three cots plus the dog kennel, plus a table to cook on. I mean, we fit a lot of stuff in here. So yep. it was, it was what we wanted. Yeah, this is definitely square footage wise. The Eskimo is the bigger of the two. Mm -hmm. It's 114 square feet. So you do get a little bit more room uh, because we don't have it staked out. When you actually stake it out, like I said, these sides will actually yeah. pull out a little bit further. So it, it actually looks a little bit smaller than it really is here. But we can fit uh, six and a half foot cots across here and still have a good, you know, two feet to walk, like walk through. Yeah. Yep. So one thing I really want to mention with the zippers on the Eskimo is they're YKK zippers. <laughs> so they're good name brand. They're heavy duty zippers. They feel really sturdy. It's so one thing, if you read some different reviews between uh, the Eskimo and the clam, is that some people have had zipper problems with the clam. We haven't yet, but uh, durability-wise, the Eskimo the zippers are impressive. They're good. Once you stake these down, and again, here you're getting like these really heavy-duty grommets here, which is nice. So you can uh, you can drill those down. I'll talk about the drill down kits here in a little bit. But then shovel some snow, or you can kind of chip some ice with your auger. Eskimo's got some nice reflective tape here, yeah. which is really nice when you get snowmobilers or ATVs or cars or trucks or whatever on the uh, lake at night. Really important for overnight camping that people be able to see you. So these really shine it uh, in the nighttime. Yeah, they did a great job on that. Really sturdy tie down points. I'll talk about again, more of the uh, tie down straps and the tie down kits that come with them. Overall, really impressed with the Eskimo's quality and, and durability. So how long did the setup of the clam take? It was a minute 45. All right. So much faster. So again, we haven't, you know, secured everything. We haven't drilled them down, um, but the clam's definitely a little bit quicker. I think it's just, just because of the shape. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier to pop out. I mean, once you get it out of the bag, you just flip the sides down and then you just walk around in circles and pop them out. Yeah. Now, neither of them, I would say, are super easy to do by yourself. Again, I'm a bigger guy. I've done them both. Yeah. If I'm going to pick one, to set up by myself, like it's just me and the kids going out, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick up I'm gonna pick up the clam because yeah. the clam is easier. I find it's easier for me to set it up by myself. It's just easier to reach everything, pop everything up by myself when I don't have that other person kind of holding it down. Yep. So I'd agree with that. That's the one I would choose if I had to go by myself. So. Yeah. Not that I can't do it with the Eskimo, it's yep. just a little bit easier. Very similar otherwise. Let's talk about the clam. As we talked about with the Eskimo, um, you know, no, this door does not quite go to the ground. There's probably about six inches there. Something that's not terrible. Um, one thing we didn't mention when we were going through the Eskimo is they both have these little Velcro setups here so that if it's windy, you can just stick that sucker to the 
inside. One thing with the kids is our son has a tendency of not unzipping it all the way down <laughs> yeah. and then he trips over it. So yeah. that is where the full size door is nice, but this isn't bad by any means. I don't, no. I don't mind it too much. It's just a little bit tricky. This also has the reflective little squares on each end. Um, it has less on it than the Eskimo does, but we found this was a, this was enough. Oh, it night. still really glows you at night. Still, I mean, this stuff just glows and glows, which is awesome they did that because when you're on a blacked out lake I mean it's important. This one has this kind of tether up here. I haven't figured out what this is for. I don't yet. know what it's for either. Folks if you know what this tether is for let us know. I'm sure it's important. It's so. probably for something important. It probably would revolutionize how we use <laughs> this shanty. Probably. But And the shape is very different. Um, oh yeah. The, it was it a hexagon? Yeah it's got shape? six sides. Six, yep. So um, yeah it's it's also got the same pockets for your tethers. Um, if you don't have a windy day, basically this is just to be sticking your guy lines into. Also on the Eskimo. You know what? Like similar. Did I you just, talk about that? No, I didn't, but I just noticed it now when we were setting up the Eskimo. I was like, oh, look at that. They put pockets for the tethers. I don't need to take you them. You didn't notice that at all these off times time. we set this up. I know. <laughs> it's all right, honey. It also has the air vents. I really didn't notice much difference in how much airflow there was though. Both of them had plenty of airflow for what we needed. So obviously step through the door. Oh, it's dark and scary in here again. I was going to say, it's darker, I think, in this one. This is what it's like with all the windows open. We're great. Obviously, when you're on the ice, that white light is reflecting everywhere. So we never had an issue during the day. Well, it's a little like you could kind of do it halfway on here, too, which is nice. Yeah, sometimes that's nice if you are if you're trying to look into like your your camera, your underwater camera, or your mm -hmm. flasher or something like that. Just uh, being able to close that up part way, keep some glare off, but you still get some light. I would say lighting is pretty comparable. Maybe the Eskimo is a little bit lighter inside, maybe just because it's a light gray so. versus the blue. Yeah. But I'd say they're pretty comparable, really. It was it wasn't like a deal breaker by any means. One huge advantage for us in particular is that headspace in here is incredible. Um, never feels small or closed in. It's super nice. That's why we ended up making this our favorite one to fish out of because you just it just felt like a bigger, I don't know, like living room environment more than the closed in, you know, coziness of the Eskimo. So I'm 6'4", I'm standing right in the center and you can see how much room I get. I can <laughs> jump and not hit the ceiling and then I can walk all the way to the edge and we just keep our gear and or put holes on the edge and I can stand right here without I never feel I have to crunch or bend over unless I'm walking through the door. Construction seems pretty durable. Man, I would say maybe a slight edge to the Eskimo. The Eskimo feels just a little bit, little bit thicker, a little bit stitching, maybe seems just a little bit nicer, but the clam actually, I mean, it seems to be pretty decent and it's, it's, it's held up good so far. Um, one thing, the windows, you know, maybe because of the shape, having the windows that don't open isn't as important in the clam. Uh, one thing I will say is because they're stitched, I mean, they stay closed, which is nice. We're, as I, I mentioned, that one by the door with the Eskimo sometimes pops open if we have it stretched out. So I've actually been really happy with the clam windows. I think they're, they're pretty solid. The pockets here aren't quite as big, but I actually like that you can drop stuff in from the top better. They seem to be a little bit more usable for me because of that than the Eskimo. Like the ones in the Eskimo, the bottom was so small, like the jackets would kind of half fall out. Yeah, so. yeah. I think these are more usable. I think being up higher too, maybe, I don't know. It just seems like the stuff is out of the way. You don't have to worry about it. So the clam also has these interior pockets. There's three of them. Nice, they kind of, the top Velcro, so you can throw your phone or your wallet in there or something like that. There's two doors, there's a door on either side, so that's nice, it's convenient. The zippers on the clam, I don't know what kind of zippers they're using, but they're not, they're not YKKs. Um, you can feel that they're, they're not quite as, as heavy duty. And if you read some of the reviews online, some people have apparently had issues with the zippers. We have not. I found when it got really cold, one of them was binding up just a little bit. I just rubbed a little soap on it to kind of lubricate it, and that seems to have uh, solved the problem. So I was gonna say we almost didn't buy this one because we there were so many people that were upset about the zippers. Yeah. But then we never had a problem with it, so it was kind of like, well, not yet, not yet. We'll see. I mean, it definitely when you stake it down, it definitely gets tight. The doors can be tight, so be careful when you're staking it down how much you pull on it. You probably want to have just a little bit of give on the zippers with the doors here. I'm still a little hesitant about it just because of how many reviews mention the fact that people have problems with the zippers. 
When it comes to waterproof, a lot of people, you'll hear people who camp in them talk about, well, if it rains and this and that, you know, you can get rain coming in. We haven't had the Eskimo in any heavy rain, but we did have the clam in some pretty heavy rain during our last trip. We had a little bit of rain coming in, but just like in the corners here, we didn't have anything coming in through the roof or things like that. So super impressed. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I would want to go camping necessarily if you know there's going to be a mon monsoon that weekend, but if you get some rain, I guess I really wouldn't worry about it. For staking down, the clam does it a little bit differently. It has these buckles. They're plastic. We'll see how well they hold up. So basically you take your ice anchor and you're gonna screw that down and then you just clip that in like so. And there's one on each corner. Not quite as heavy duty as the Eskimos, but uh, so far it's worked pretty good for us. So for layouts, we've fished out of both of them and we've slept in both of them. Now the clam is about 20, 25 square feet smaller than the Eskimo. So when it came to sleeping, we didn't, at least I didn't care for it too much for sleeping. It was tight. We didn't have as much room. You were skirting like your legs around the side of the cot. So which we, we take those giant cots. So, yep. I mean, that's what we get. But, um, you know, that immediately showed us what the difference was between the two shapes or layouts. Yeah. Three cots in here was tight with some gear. Yeah, we had room for nothing else. Three cots yeah. in the Eskimo was fine. Plenty of gear. We had room for everything. I'd say you could fit four cots and some gear in the Eskimo. Yep. I don't think you could even fit four cots here in the clam. If no. you did, you wouldn't have room for anything else. Yep. You'd have to go in through the door and crawl in. So personally, and you tell me if you disagree or what your favorite is, but I kind of like sleeping in the Eskimo, yep. but I like fishing out of the clam better. Same. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's I, my preference too, because I like hanging out with the higher ceiling. Yep. It just feels bigger in here. Um, but it still stayed plenty warm. Like I thought maybe with the ceiling being higher, it would get cold, but it doesn't. I think we fully agree on that, which is why we did that last time. We both agreed on that layout. When it comes to fishing, which is, I guess, a personal preference with the kids and things like that, I like having the holes kind of like, usually the way we'll do it, if this is our entryway, right? I'll set up like holes kind of over here, you know, on like maybe one, two, three, three sides or something like that, or three and a half sides. And then kind of by the door, I'll keep like our heater, our gear and things like that. And then I feel it just gives me some space in the middle where I can kind of move stuff around, work on stuff, move gear off to the side, and then, you know, go from kid to kid or hole to hole as I need to. So, and again, I can stand up, which is super nice. With the Eskimo, it, it totally works. It's still a great uh, shanty to fish out of. It's just that it's a little bit narrower. So I found when we had our stuff in there, just a little bit harder to navigate, even though it's a larger, you know, footprint, larger square footage. If you're fishing with a lot more people, I don't know, maybe the Eskimo would be an advantage just because it's bigger square footage wise. You could get more holes in it, more people, but. Um, I never felt like in the clam because I don't think it's, I think it's just the shape. Like you yeah. just never felt like you were crawling over someone else. Yes. Even when all of us were fishing. And so like that was a huge advantage because we have little kids and little kids are in and out all the time because yeah. their attention span is like this big. I loved fishing out of this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. As I said, I think they both work. They're both uh, really good shanties, um, but just personal preference. I, I just like the shape of this a little bit more, even though it's a wee bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So similar skirting. Again, once you get it set up, you're just gonna wanna shovel some snow over and this really helps keep the drafts out from underneath, especially if you're spending the night, it makes a huge difference inside. On any of these hub style shanties, you have these loops that you can attach these tie down ropes for. Now, generally we don't secure these unless it's gonna be windy or we're gonna be sleeping out there overnight and we think the wind might pick up. It's worth saying though, that we've been out in some pretty awful wind and we haven't had a lot of trouble with it. Like no. this, both of them are actually shaped really well that the wind seemed to pass right around them. But the clam just has this uh, nylon strap here and then it comes with uh, so a little rope with one of these little adjuster doohickeys. So the clam comes with six of these uh, self-tapping ice hooks. So just be aware, if you wanna anchor all of your points inside and all of your points on the outside, you're gonna to need to pick up some more of these. Clam and Eskimo both make drill attachments really? that clamp mm -hmm. onto these and then screw them right into the ice. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between the two, so you can look at the difference between the clam hook here and the Eskimo hook. The Eskimo hook is quite a bit 
larger. I don't necessarily know that that makes a difference for um, you know the power of holding them down, but I will tell you that I was able to find one of the clam drill adapters and it does not work with the Eskimo one. The Eskimo one will work with the clam one. I'm still waiting to find an Eskimo one in stock somewhere. So, hmm. um, so we've been using an impact driver in the lag bolts and that's been getting us by. Doing them by hand is a pain in the butt. <laughs> so terrible. What seems to be the best way is start, poke a little <laughs> hole, like chip a little hole and then start screwing them in. But it is not fun to do these by hand. Comparing the two, the clam has this uh, nylon strap. Now I found that this little adjustment thing tends to slip. So I think the idea is that you can put this in and then adjust it. What I've had to do is I've just had to anchor this all the way as up. As far as it can as go. As far as it can go. You know, the other thing you could do is just tie a little, a little loop halfway in between. That's what I've done with all my hunting blinds. So then, you know, I could just have a loop here and do it that way too. So here's the Eskimo kit. The Eskimo kit comes in this kind of a little bit nicer bag. That said, it doesn't really fold up that great. So I don't know. The Eskimo, I forgot how many of these it comes with, but it again, it doesn't come with as many as you need to be able to anchor all of your points and do the hubs. So what you'll need to do is if you want to get more of these, you have to pick up Eskimo makes a kit that comes with two of the anchors and then two of these straps. Now the straps in the Eskimo kit are really nice. So they have this nice, hook here. So I just clamp that in there and then it's got this great adjustment mechanism. So same thing. I can, I can drill my hole wherever or drill my anchor wherever and then adjust it however I want. That's like so we picked up the clam at our local fleet farm. I forgot exactly what I paid for it. I thought it was like $4.99. Yeah, it was either $4.99 or $5.99. I think it was, on, no, it was $4.99. Is it $4.99? All right. We're gonna consult the website and right <laughs> here, I'm gonna pop up the uh, the price. The thing was, it was it was in stock like everywhere. It was yeah. amazing, like you could get it, no problem. Yep, with the Eskimo here, we found it at the Sportsman's Warehouse in Kalamazoo, Michigan. When I looked at their website, they had a two day shipping option. And it said, on their website, it said, arrives in two days. It was like an extra 50 bucks or 75 bucks or something. But I was like, you know what, let's pay it so we have it. We really wanted to do a trip uh, this upcoming weekend. So I did that and two, three days later, it still hasn't arrived. And I realized I hadn't gotten a shipment notice. So I logged in to the, uh, to the Sportsman's Warehouse website and it just told me my order had been canceled. Never got a notification about it, nothing like that. So obviously I was pretty disappointed with Sportsman's Warehouse in that regard. Usually I don't rip on people no. on internet videos, but I had a bad experience with Sportsman's Warehouse. I mean, the least you can do is send me an email and let me know my order's been canceled. So yep. uh, thumbs down on them. That said, I happened to be at the Cabela's in Prairie du Chien looking for some other stuff. And when I had checked their website before, it didn't show them in stock, but when I got there, a couple days later, they had them in stock. So I snatched it up and uh, there <laughs> we go. You called me on the phone. You're like, it's here, it's here. And yeah. I was like, get it. Yeah, it was yeah. meant to be, it was meant to be. So uh, pick that up. So that was cool. We've ordered other stuff direct from Eskimo, some of our uh, ice fishing gear. Yes. And them being a Wisconsin company here in Wisconsin, things arrive, it's crazy. Even though they're like a four hour drive away, we order it and stuff gets here the next day. Yeah. So I don't know if they're that good with everybody, but been really happy with that. And it's cool that they, you know, uh, give that discount for first responders and, yeah, uh, and military sweet. and stuff like that. So it's super easy, definitely worth checking out. Eskimo is definitely more expensive. It's a couple, I wanted to say it's like 750 or something that like that. was 799. 799 versus oh. 499. So yeah. what's my math? $300 difference. <laughs> yes. You know, you can find them, you can find it on sale every now and then. And you know, that discount knocks a few bucks off it too. Definitely the Eskimo is a little bit more expensive. And like I said, I, I think the Eskimo, I feel like the material, the construction is just a little bit stronger, just the stitching and things like that than the clam. Not that the clam is bad, but it just, the Eskimo feels a little bit sturdier and it's obviously bigger. It's got more hubs and stuff like that. So that is probably, you know, adds up to some of the price. Well, and I think it's worth mentioning too that the clam, you can see daylight through some of the stitching. So if you were gonna go extremely low temperatures, I'd be doing the Eskimo because it seems like it's multi-panel. 
yeah. uh, over the stitching. So if you're gonna, I mean, if every little pinhole is gonna be killing you as far as your heating, I would say maybe do the Eskimo. Okay? Yeah. Pay the extra. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. We, we don't have any way of measuring that per se, but I will say that the fabric on the Eskimo feels a little bit thicker than the clam. And maybe that's because I think there's this outer material on top of the insulated fabric where this just seems to be the insulated fabric. Yeah, it's quilted yep. fabric, yeah. yeah. So when it comes to packing them up, getting them in the bag, I think the Eskimo is easier. Okay. For a couple of reasons. It's kind of a rectangular shape more than the... Yeah, yep. The clam is a little misshapen. Pointy. <laughs> the problem, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video with the clam too, is that I don't really trust the bag and I don't trust the zipper on it. So you really gotta be careful when you're putting in the bag, I think. The clam, especially when these things get icy, they can be tough to get in the bag. The other thing, the strap that the clam has with- They is, came with was is, garbage. Yeah. So this is our own like tie down strap. So we just added this on because the one they had, it was so tight. Like, Well, it's, it's even, too short. I don't wanna say it's was, garbage. It's just that it's too short. It was too short. Like, it was like a double ring one. That... Yeah, they need to make it a foot longer. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. It wasn't the, good. The one that came with the Eskimo is plenty long and it just works a little bit better. So that is the summary of our comparison of the Clam C890 Thermal and the Eskimo Outbreak 850 XD. Both really capable pop-up shanties. Different. They have some differences between them. We loved them both. We love yeah. them both, honestly. We were really glad later that we bought, because we initially were like, well, we can compare them. We could do another video, which we are. But now we like them both for different reasons. Now we like, we're glad we both have one of each. If I had to buy one. And you could only afford one. If we're talking camping because of the extra space, just because we need to fit three cots and gear, I would go with the Eskimo. Okay. just because of the extra space. That's fair. If we weren't talking camping, if we were just gonna go fishing, I would go with the clam primarily because of the headroom for me as a tall person. Yeah. And I just like that, even though it's a little smaller footprint, I like the little, the more round kind of wider layout. See, I would do the clam. I would do the clam. Okay, you can, if you can only pick one. Yeah, yeah, because it was, it was, the price point was lower, so I think it's more affordable. Okay. Um, it still held heat just fine. Um, I think that you could take down the cots while you're fishing and then, mm -hmm. you know, you do fine. And most people don't bring as many people as we do either. That's true. So you could probably leave a cot up if it was just you, you just wanted a big old hub. I think you could get away with just the clam. So, um, but if you're going to do the big groups, we, <laughs> I, I agree. Eskimo is probably yeah. a better layout for multiple cot groups. So. All right. Well, there you have it folks. <laughs> I mean, we don't agree on everything. <laughs> Clearly. Um, <laughs> but uh, I both have, I, both are, are pretty cool shanties. We've been happy with both of them. Okay. Both have some great advantages. And honestly, I think whichever one you choose, I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. Well, thanks a bunch for watching. Hope this uh, was helpful for you guys. <laughs> you know, hopefully it gave you guys some uh, insight into which one of these has the features that might work better for you. And, uh, and yeah, and help you make a decision if you've been looking at either of these uh, pop-up shanties. So if you got any questions or other hubs that we didn't look at, uh, drop them in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts and we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Hey, you gotta have your hand. So, no, have, I know. Gotta so have we gotta tell them what camera. we're doing. Oh, okay, all right. So we say, all right, we're gonna see who can win if we do it. Is each of us on? Or, yeah. Let's start. <laughs> all right, so. We're gonna see who can <laughs> pack it up faster, okay. You don't have to put it in the bag because that's that's tough. I've done them myself and I struggle with them. They're tough to do all by yourself. Put them in the bag. But right. you gotta have it collapsed and you gotta have it folded back into its thing. Okay. All right, you gotta be touching the camera, don't cheat. I have to do the stopwatch. All right, ready? I can't start, I can't start with my nose. All right. Ready, set, go. <laughs>
just got me. Oh, you know why? Because I forgot the door things. Oh, no. You still would have beat me. Yep. Yeah. Forgot the door. I'm like, why won't this collapse? That said. I forgot to put the top down. Oh. So I didn't do a very good job either. That said, the, uh, I think just because of the extra hubs, the Eskimo is a little bit trickier to kind of yeah. angle everything. The clam is a little different shape. The Eskimo is a little bit trickier just to angle things.